You're listening to Podcateers. Welcome to episode 315 of Podcateers. This week, Mel and I have a chance to recap some of the stuff that we did on the FGP Happy Hour call. And uh, I find something on Instagram that is both horrifying and yet I feel like I need in my life. We'll tell you about that in the episode. Plus, you'll be able to check it out in the blog post over at podcateers.com slash 315. But the big thing that we talk about this week is obviously the big news coming from Disney this last week that Splash Mountain will be reimagined into a Princess and the Frog attraction. Uh, If you have any thoughts on anything that we talk about in this episode, especially that, please make sure to join the conversation over on Facebook, Instagram, or on Twitter. We'd love to hear your thoughts about it. And although I post this at the end of the episode, I'm just going to throw it out here now, uh, considering that we're getting this reimagining, obviously... It's more than likely not going to be called Splash Mountain anymore. What would you rename the attraction? Make sure to comment on the post for this episode and let us know what you would like to call the attraction were it up to you. This episode of Podcast Here is brought to you in part by the generosity of the FGP Squad, our podcast fairy godparents, through their support via Patreon. If you would like more information about being part of the FGP Squad family, it's very simple. You can find out more information by going to podcasters.com slash FGP. I had a lot of fun on the FGP happy hour call this last weekend. I'm looking forward to the next one. Uh, I couldn't believe that it's been almost a month since or a month since we did the last one. Um, so I'm, I'm hoping to maybe do stuff more often. I don't know. I'm, I'm really enjoying it. And having the opportunity to connect with members of the FGP squad is always awesome. So uh, looking forward to the next one. More info on when the next happy hour is going to be. So just keep an eye out on our social media uh, and on Patreon for information on when the next call will be. Uh, I hope you're all looking forward to it as much as I am. So that's it. It's time to uh, get this episode started. Let's do this. Here is episode 315 of Podcateers. So, how many things do you think we're going to talk about in this episode that we're going to be like, yup, that's happening? And then tomorrow or the day after, Disney's going to be like, nope. <laughs> how many How many fingers do I have again? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was so funny. Last week when we were thinking about like, what are we going to talk about? And are we going to talk about this reopening? And it looked like it was such a certain thing, right? And right. we said from the very beginning, look, this is possibly not going to happen because it's a proposal. The state of California right. hasn't approved it. We're just in these phases. It looked like they were kind of jumping to phase three all of a sudden, which seems mm-hmm. super odd. And I remember reading that post and everybody started reposting saying, this is happening. Disneyland reopening. Disneyland reopening. I'm like, no, they're they're proposing to reopen. And right. when things like this happen... I always think of the business side of things, you know, how I try to look at it from both sides and looking at it from a business standpoint, I thought to myself, well, Disneyland brings in a lot of money, especially for the city of Anaheim, which is why the mayor of Anaheim was like, yup, let's get this done. Let's do this. Like he tweeted out and he was ready to go. But I mean, as we saw, there was these surges in cases and all of a sudden Things are looking not so good again. And yeah. they were not approved. But up until the day that we released last week's episode, everything, like they were posting the ambassador saying, we can't wait till we reopen on July. You know, yeah. I was like, wait a second. So this is really happening? Like, I I, I couldn't fathom it, right? It seemed like right. they knew something that we didn't, but just hadn't announced it yet. And when they finally said, look, it looks like, they're not even going to begin to consider reopening plans until after, I think, what, the 4th of July or something like that? I think it yeah, was. Yeah, that's what it looks like. I uh, I just couldn't help but laugh. <laughs> I just... Right? <laughs> I, I, we post, and it's like, record scratch. I'm like, okay. Just kidding, guys. Just kidding. <laughs> Disney said otherwise, so don't worry about it. 
<laughs> disclaimer. <laughs> yeah, I should have put it up with a disclaimer, but eh, it's fine. I mean, look, we're not perfect. We don't represent the Disney company, you know, as much no. as we would love to one day. We don't represent the Disney company. We represent our own thoughts. And, you know, what we talk about is our own thing. Uh, and Disney just happens to be one of those things that we love to talk about, which is why we do this podcast. So, right. <laughs> yeah, we're not going to be 100 percent accurate. And that's also <laughs> why we do our best to stay away from all the rumor sites and all the, yeah. the, the postings that people are like, well, they're saying this is happening and they're saying this because it's not official till Disney says it's official. Right. So, we, we're just rolling with the punches. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Does it make for great conversation sometimes? Yeah, occasionally it does. But, I mean, if we talked about every single speculation, there'd be a lot of things that we got wrong. Yeah. You know? And I want to try to minimize the amount of incorrect information because it's going to happen. Incorrect information mm-hmm. is going to get out there. We're human. You know, we're not perfect. And that is actually part of the reason why I didn't know exactly how to, to talk about so, you know, the big announcement this last week, obviously, was that Splash Mountain is going to be rethemed, you know. And right. so we're going to talk about that later in the episode. But I was trying to figure out how to talk about it because there's things about Song of the South I didn't even know, you know. So anyway, I'll, I'll get mm-hmm. into that in a little bit. But I, I do want to start off the episode by just sending out a huge thank you to all of the members of the FGP squad that were able to make it to our happy hour this last weekend. Yeah. It was super fun. I mean, it, it was great because we had an opportunity to kind of sit down and talk about this whole Splash Mountain thing. Uh, everybody had some really great comments. Everybody was able to share their thoughts, how they felt about it, how they felt about, you know, just culture in general right now which was Mm -hmm. fantastic uh it's one of the things that i really enjoy about the podcast because you know prior to doing these monthly like happy hour things we had an opportunity to go out to the parks and in the parks i was able to talk to to listeners and sometimes they would send me dms on instagram or facebook whatever the case is and although it's on a phone call, there's that human interaction you have with other people that, you know, it's not yes. just something you're reading or it's not just this like post, you know, that that's coming from out of nowhere sometimes. Uh, I, I mean, I love it. I love having that opportunity. This last call, I got a little carried away with Planet Coaster. <laughs> Um, but I mean, I've been talking about this for a while now, uh, for those that are not familiar, Planet Coaster is a ride simulating game, uh, very similar to a game called Roller Coaster Tycoon from a long time ago. I found out about Planet Coaster years ago. I always kind of wanted to play and I never had the opportunity to do it, uh, until recently I, I purchased a copy. I have it on steam now and uh, I was really excited because People have created these amazing looking parks. Some of them are rebuilding entire attractions that that are inspired and look almost identical to attractions at Disney parks. As soon as I got the game, I downloaded a couple of parks that people had created simulating like Walt Disney World, Disneyland Paris and stuff like that. And uh, during the call, we kind of walked through the park. We looked at the similarities. <laughs> you have the option to ride the attractions, which I thought was pretty yeah. cool. We were beheaded like 384 <laughs> times on some of those attractions because they were just too yeah. low. But I, I, it was fun for me. I did miss playing the games like we did on the last call, though. Having that additional interaction, I missed that part of it. Yeah. I mean, even, you know what? Just what you were doing was just giving us like that little fix even if it was for like a little bit it helped and it's not just that we were just interacting and talking and just being like oh man i remember this or the way this sounds or oh my god when this happened and just reminiscing i mean it's broken record time we miss the parks so it's like you're we're just doing what we can by just bringing that kind of magic in one way or another so i had fun i mean there was a lot of laughs so that was really good that's that's (laughs) what i was hoping for 
the only problem with it was that it did take 64 hours to launch the game. We all took a nap. We all went and made dinner. <laughs> we came. I'm kidding. Uh, but it did take a good like six minutes for the right to load because it was loading all the. So here's what happened. I had launched the game and it only took like a couple minutes to launch the first time. However, right before we went online with the FGP squad, Steam was having this like summer sale where they had a coupon and everything was like up to 60% off or something. And Score. all of the like the DLC that was available for Planet Coaster was on sale for like $4 and it's normally like 15 bucks a piece. And so I went in and bought every single like DLC pack that they had so that I had everything available to me in the park so that I could edit, I could mod and copy stuff from park to park. And that's what I'm excited about. So I think what was happening was that first time, since it was the first time launching the game after buying everything, it was uh -huh. unpacking everything and making everything available to me. That's why Makes I think sense. it took that long. I could be wrong. And if that's the case, I'm just going to have to start it up like now so that next month when we do the next happy hour, it's ready to go. Perfect. That might work. I think I'll, <laughs> I'll just do that. It'll run smoothly. Yeah, it'll be great. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, it was, uh, it, I mean, for like I said, for me, it was super fun. I hope that everybody else that was on the call also had fun doing it. I think it helped when we went on YouTube and we started playing the music for the attractions that we were supposedly yes. writing on <laughs> because yeah. it, it was that sense of like, oh yeah, this is supposed to be small world, but that's a wall, right? There's nothing <laughs> there. <laughs> or it's, the lights are off inside. <laughs> or how certain vehicles are supposed to look like something and instead they look like the Cheshire Cat's distant cousin, Worcestershire. <laughs> it, it is what it is, but... Yeah, I had fun. I hope the FGP squad did as well. Uh, we're going to be posting the date for next month's FGP happy hour, uh, hopefully over the next week or so. I mean, if you guys liked the idea, and FGP squad sound off and let me know, but uh, I got another game. I got Disneyland Adventures. Now, <gasps> Disneyland Adventures is an actual <laughs> release that happened originally on the Xbox. It was like part of the Kinect system. It was eventually ported to Xbox One and for PC and everything. And I played the original one on Kinect. And let me tell you, it was a nightmare. <laughs> I did not oh, like no. playing it on Kinect. Uh, so I just kind of <laughs> left it alone. But I just got this one. It has support for the controller. And it walks you through the park mm -hmm. i think to get an actual disney fix with actual disney characters and to kind yeah. of follow a storyline i would love to do that i know i talked about doing game stuff once the discord server is up but if this is mm -hmm. something that you guys like let me know and i will do more of these because it gives me an excuse to disconnect from everything else and play a game and <laughs> yeah uh, it's already come up before. You know, we were going to play some classic games, but um, yeah, I, I want to make sure that a bunch of people aren't bored when I'm doing it, right? So, right. And if you have any other ideas of other stuff that we can do, you know, let me know. Uh, I did get a whole bunch of other games for us to play, and uh, I do want to bring that aspect back. I had a lot of fun playing you yeah. know, with everybody. So, I'm excited. I just, I love that stuff. I don't get a chance to do it very often. And so anytime I can squeeze it in, it makes me happy. And hopefully yeah. it makes other people happy as well. Uh, speaking of things that make me happy, Gravity Falls. You guys know I'm a yes. huge Gravity Falls fan. <laughs> and uh, I came up on this artist. I wish I knew his real name, but on Instagram, he goes by Creature Kid. Uh, creature with a K, kid with a K, obviously. And man, he put together like a like a head of Grunkle Stan. Like he, uh -huh. he made it out of silicone. <laughs> he painted it. He added hair to it. He added almost squishy looking eyeballs. And then he <laughs> mounted the head, which just looks odd. But man, if Grunkle Stan ever came to life, this would be the spitting image. Mm -hmm. It's horrifying, amazing, and I want one. Right? The details. Oh, my God. The details. Just, okay, you know that it, one, I'm, I'm 
admire sculpture work. So if I see this details and how it happens and then to see the end product and oh my gosh, realistic looking, so good. Uh, I know. Just you know what got me? Man. The pores. Yes. The pores. That's not easy. I know. <laughs> I, I was so surprised to see the pores. I saw the clay sculpture that he had put up. And then I saw when he started making like the actual, uh, like the silicone mask, I guess. is like a, a silicone, when he made the, the head out of the silicone mold. Mm -hmm. Those pores, man, just look like like uh they're scary looking but they're so realistic and then the tiny yeah. hairs the eyebrows the look on his face with the fez on and the glasses uh and then to top it all off if you lift the fez there's a tiny uh -huh. bill cipher nice. and i just thought it was amazing <laughs> he gave it to alex hirsch he posted <gasps> an entire series on his youtube channel uh, or I, I guess an entire series might be incorrect because I think it's just one video, uh, but I could be wrong. Uh, basically of the making of this Grunkle Stan nice. head. So if you want to take a look at the video and then pictures from his Instagram, head over to podcasters.com slash 315. I'm telling you, it's one of the most horrifying things you've ever seen. And yet at the same time, if you're a Gravity Falls fan, you're like, I need one of these in my life. I need one. Even if it's just a mask that you put on, during Halloween and you're giving out candy to kids. I don't even care. <laughs> like I would use it for that. Ooh. Or I would put it behind the wit like the window and have it dark, but have kind of see him through the window. That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> Give him a follow. He's got some crazy looking stuff on there. Uh he posts a lot of pictures of his pug. And he makes a lot of models Aww. that have like his pug's face on like little monsters and stuff like that, which I thought was endearing and kind of like cool. <laughs> but yeah, it, there's a lot of that stuff on there. I thought it was kind of cool. Um, all right. So in a little bit, we're going to talk about the uh, reimagining that's going to be happening. But before we do, I do want to remind you that this episode of Podcasters is brought to you in, with the support of our podcast, Fairy Godparents, otherwise known as the FGP Squad. Uh, the FGP Squad is a group of listeners just like you that help us out with a monthly contribution via Patreon. If you would like to help us out or just want more information on what the FGP Squad is, you can head over to podcasters.com slash FGP. Uh, as you heard a little while ago, we've been doing these FGP happy hours. I post additional content for the FGP Squad whenever possible on our Patreon. And uh, we're going to be starting our Discord server soon so that we can all kind of chat with each other and do some other special stuff on there. So uh, again, if you want more information, head over to podcasters.com slash FGP. And to all of the members of the FGP squad, I just want to send a huge thank you to all of you for your continued support. So um, we we mentioned the, the FGP call and uh, we talked uh, a lot, I think, for a good 30, 45 minutes. Yeah. The concept art that was released for this, first of all, looks gorgeous. I just, oh, I just want to start off by saying that. Uh, and it's been met with a lot of controversy for a lot of different reasons, I think. Primarily because of the fact that... Uh, okay, so let, let's, uh, let's rewind a little bit. Mm -hmm. So Splash Mountain, based on Song of the South, right? Uh, Splash right. Mountain was originally the creation of... Disney legend Tony Baxter. Uh, this was an attraction that he came up with back in 1983. Uh, at the time, that area of the park was known as Bear Country, and that was the home of the Country Bear Jamboree, which ran from 1972 through 2001. Uh, we actually had a few episodes where we talked about the history of the Country Bears. We talked about Critter Country, Bear Country, and then we topped it off with some armchair imagineering of that area. So you can go back and mm -hmm. listen to episodes 281, 282, and 283 if you're interested in checking those out. But yeah, so uh, when, when the idea came up, it was Dick Nunes who said that they that Imagineering should do a log flume. And Imagineering was like, nah, nah, I don't think we're going to do that. Like, log flumes are like, pff, not our park. You know, that's like, leave it for the other parks. And eventually, yeah. you know, this idea for uh, what was then known as Zippity River Run 
came to be and they were like oh wow this is actually fantastic this is a great idea so they set forth to put together Splash Mountain and it became like one of the most expensive projects that Imagineering has ever created like Alice Davis went on to say at one point that it was so over budget that when America Sings closed, part of the way that they made up mm-hmm. the budget for Splash was by repurposing characters from America Sings into Splash Mountain. So the only characters that were new to the attraction were the main characters that were used to tell the story. So yeah, so there are a few different versions of Splash Mountain in parks around the world. Each one of them tells a slightly different story, but the story isn't one story. It's kind of a compilation of stories that make up the attraction at each one of the different locations. Uh, Each one being here at Disneyland, one at Walt Disney World, and one at um, in Tokyo Disneyland. Mm -hmm. So Splash Mountain itself, like I said, is based on Song of the South. Back in, in 1881, a journalist named Joel Chandler Harris uh, wrote a book called Nights with Uncle Remus. And this book was a collection of 71 stories. It was actually one in a series of books that were um, about Uncle Remus and his stories, which collected stories based on African-American folk tales, uh, very similar to Aesop's fables. But what made these stand apart to the readers at the time was the dialect used in the stories because they were mainly written to be told by four slave storytellers. So that's kind of what differentiated these stories over others uh, at the time. And I'm personally, I'm not sure if all of the stories include him, but it looks like the majority of the stories were centered around this quote unquote trickster, not Loki, uh, but a a rabbit who tries to kind of use his wits to get out of situations that he's put up against, but he doesn't always succeed. Uh, One thing that really stands out from the original tales from Central and Southern Africa is that the trickster is actually a frog, not a rabbit. So the the rabbit seems to be specific to Harris's writing. In one of the descriptions that I read for the book, it said that both races enjoyed reading the stories because they presented an idealized view of race relations after the Civil War. Uh, And... I can't vouch for that comment because, to be honest with you, I've never read the books. Uh, This is just a description that I read that somebody had had posted as a comment or something for the book itself. Um, I have heard people say, though, that it glosses over a lot of what slavery was really like. Um, So I think that's kind of where the root of this problem is, right? Mm Mm-hmm. The film itself, Song of the South, was a hybrid live action and animated production, uh, very similar to the style of Mary Poppins, uh, because there are people that have never seen Song of the South. So Mary Poppins would be the closest thing that we could compare it to. However, Song of the South established that two decades before Mary Poppins did. (laughs) Uh, And the film itself is based on a young boy named Johnny, played by Bobby Driscoll, and his experiences while visiting his grandmother on her plantation during the period known as the Reconstruction Era after the Civil War when slavery was abolished. Johnny then becomes friends with Uncle Remus, who tells him the stories of Br'er Rabbit, which throughout the film are used to show Johnny how to deal with things that are happening around on the plantation. So it's kind of ironic that Song of the South became one of Walt's most celebrated films because of I guess what it was presenting and yet it's the one that's got the most controversy behind it because of what it's showing and Mm -hmm. you know with everything that's been happening over the course of the last couple of months the the protests that we've seen around the world, you know, we've talked about before, this was kind of the tip of the iceberg, 
right? This is something that people right. have been dealing with for decades, not actually hundreds of years now. Hundreds. And, mm -hmm. you know, when, when Song of the South first came out, we lived in a totally different America than we do now. And yet, in some ways, it's actually still the same. I hate to say it. But I think what's different now than it was back then is that there are more people open to learning and acknowledging the fact that a lot of the things that went on were wrong. And, right. you know, I think now because of the fact that, you know, we, we've seen the videos and we've seen every, you know, what's happening with these protests on social media, there's a lot of things coming to light. And finally, people are starting to understand, oh, man, like we knew about this, but we didn't really see what was happening. Right. It's opening people's eyes right. finally. So the way that films portrayed actors and actresses and the way that things were done before is definitely not how things would be done today. Right. Song of the South, I think at its core was meant to be something positive. Zippity Doodah is a, a classic song now in the Disney library. And I think people hear that song and it brings them instant happiness in some cases. Right. Mm -hmm. The thing that I feel people are bothered the most about when it comes to Song of the South. Uh, and, and I get this argument. Right. I the, the thing about Walt Disney is that, you know, people talk a lot about movies and stories being Disneyfied. Right. And we've seen this before where it's the saccharine view of a, a particular story. And Walt Disney's been doing this since he started making films like if you think of the the grim fairy tales of what cinderella was and what pinocchio yeah. was and what like all these original stories are gruesome tales they are not Very. family friendly at all what walt disney wanted to do was provide family entertainment song of the south was no exception. Walt wanted to present a family-friendly version of these Uncle Remus stories, which in their essence, I think, were trying to provide a positive message, right? And yeah. uh, I'm personally, I'm still trying to, like, I I'm trying to research more about this. I'm trying to read more about it. I'm trying to learn as much as possible. You know, a, a lot of what I'm sharing today is what I've read over the course of the last week or two. Um, because before the announcement of Princess and the Frog becoming the new theme for Splash Mountain, there was a petition that I think a, a yeah. cast member had put up saying that Disney should retheme Splash Mountain because it was racist. And in light of everything that was happening around the world, that they should consider just changing the theme because it was based on, on this racist film. I understand where they're coming from with that. But at the same time, uh, it there's this weird generational gap that I think we talked about with Jen and Morgan, where Jen was surprised to know that she has friends that have never seen Song of the South. And along the same line, there's people that don't even know the attraction is based on Song of the South. Like they just know Splash yeah. Mountain for what it is. You know, this attraction that has this really catchy song. And they write it, they like it, they like getting wet during the summer. That's it. That's what the attraction is to them. So there's this like really fine line that I think a lot of people are trying to straddle where they're trying to be conservative, but at the same time, they're trying to get rid of all these things that had these negative connotations. And that's it's the whole cancel culture, right? Right. And I don't know. I think in... It's difficult for a company like Disney to please everyone. Right. Especially under the guidance of Bob Iger. I think the Disney company, although they've been trying to be profitable, has also been trying to work towards equality and working towards being as inclusive as possible. I mean, when do you think we would have ever seen rainbow colored Mickey ears? It's, you see yeah. what I mean? Like the Disney company now is dealing with the ramifications of what 
voices sounded like in the 50s and the 60s and before, right? Like what a voice sounded mm-hmm. like then isn't what a voice sounds like now. And that's right. the that's the line that people like Bob Iger are trying to make sure that they don't cross in either direction. The thing we know about this reimagining is that this has apparently been in the works now for several years. Uh, it, it it looks like it's go, it's going back about five or six years. And it, it could even go farther than that because, you know, Bob Iger has said in the past, as early as 2010, Bob Iger was on phone calls with investors saying that they're never going to re-release Song of the South because it's considered antiquated and offensive. Right. You know, and even before him, Michael Eisner made it clear that he didn't want to re-release it because of the potential racial backlash of the film. Um, now, it didn't right. it didn't go without releases. I do want to make that clear that although the film never saw a U.S. home media release, it was released in the U.K. on VHS in 1982 and then again in 1981. And then in Japan, it was released on VHS in 85. And then in 90, it was released again on VHS and Laserdisc. And then on top of that, because of Japan's uh, copyright laws, it's part of the public domain in Japan. Wait, what? Yeah. In Japan, it's part of the public domain because their copyright laws aren't as strict as ours are. You know, here in the U.S., copyright laws have in a way been kind of been dictated by Mickey Mouse. You know, so they're a little different in Japan. And because of that, it's readily available there. You know, so, uh, I mean, it's it's hard. I mean, even last year when the release of Disney Plus was happening, Bob Iger kept saying, yeah, the entire Disney library is going to be on there. And instantly, even we thought, is Song of the South going to be on there? Are they going to put some kind of warning? You know, other films on there that have potential you know, racial undertones have have been marked prior to the mm-hmm. movie starting with notes saying contains this, contains that. And even right. in the descriptions, they talk about it as well. Uh, movies like Dumbo, uh, I, I believe Peter Pan has been has been updated to include uh, some kind of, of verbiage about that. Um, but Song of the South just isn't going to be released. They've made mm-hmm. it very, very clear. I, I, I guess everybody thinks that it's banned, right? Like this conversation came up the, the last couple of times that we've talked about it, that people think that it's banned. But in reality, it's Disney self-imposing a like a internal ban on it to try to prevent, you know, any backlash from releasing it. And I know that there's a lot of people that are for the release of it. Um, mm-hmm. Disney legend Whoopi Goldberg, after she received her Disney Legend Award, she mentioned that she would have liked to see Song of the South be released again. You know, so there are people that are for it. But Bob Iger has clearly stated that although the movie would give them some financial gain, like in the short term, in the long term, it's not beneficial for the company because it's it's not in sync with the views that they're trying to change the company to be, mm-hmm. right? There's right. There's these values that they're trying to instill that are no longer really valid and they're trying to make sure that they can maintain that reputation so so that if if you didn't know that's how they're connected but we joked about it on the happy hour call calling it splash tree stump (laughs) because there was just no no mountains in the bayou but i mean overall i mean i know you shared it on the call but I mean, what are your thoughts on the redesign of Splash Mountain? Okay, so first thoughts was, I'm I'm okay. I'm all for it. I was once on the side of, I have never seen Song of the South. And when I wrote Splash, I remember, like, I didn't know what where the characters came from. It was kind of a disconnect, if that makes sense. But after seeing Song of the South, yeah, I could, I... I agree, and I see why they're going to change it. There's some parts that actually make... It's a little difficult to watch, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, 
But for Tiana, I am I am just so excited. I am so excited because she just does. Oh my gosh. Um, I remember having to go see Princess and the Frog for the first time in theaters, being so excited to see history being made. You know, we get the first black princess. Yeah. And to s know that she's going to get this attraction overhaul, I'm excited. I'm just a little worried that I, I did mention this, that it would be an overlay. And that's something I don't want to see because she deserves like the bayou, give her the glam and everything that yeah. she could think of. Just give her all of that, you know, um, seeing the concept art, beautiful to see that we're going to get a bayou. Let's do it. I mean, I could, we were just talking about how it would look at night, the possibilities oh, and know. just everything, all the new stuff, the new experiences and what's to come. That's the exciting part. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's been a lot of, I mean, I uh, look to be completely honest with you. Mm -hmm. It's probably been like 10 years since I've been on Splash Mountain. Okay, yeah. I think I mentioned that on the call too. I don't write it very often because in the summer, it's just way too long of a line. And then Gavin had to open his mouth and he's like, well, what about FastPass, dude? <laughs> and I'm all like, I'd rather use it for something else, dude. And he's all like, okay, dude. And I was like, all right then, buy me a churro. And he's all like, okay, I'll get you a churro. I mean, it probably didn't happen like that, but that's how I remember it. So Gavin, you owe me a churro. But, <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, he makes a good point. Like, I could have used a fast pass, but I didn't. I mean, m more than likely, look, if I'm ever in the parks, I'm probably mm -hmm. carrying around all my camera gear. And oh, yeah. I don't want to get that wet. And, yes, I know I could put it in a plastic bag or whatever, but why risk it? You know, so because of that, I very rarely get on any water-based attractions because I don't want to be soaking wet. Uh, even in the summer, I'd, I'd rather go get on It's a Small World or Pirates or something where it's nice and cool and it's just relaxing. Mansion. Mansion. <laughs> yeah. I mean, all those attractions, I feel I, am you know, enjoy a little bit more. Not that I don't enjoy Splash Mountain. I did enjoy it. Am I going to ride the new version of it? Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. On that alone... I mean, I think I fall into the small percentage of people that doesn't care that this is changing. I actually yeah. applaud them for changing it because it's funny. Like when Disneyland first opened, obviously Walt wanted to open a park that catered to families. Right. And right. over the years, those families have grown up with Disneyland. However, times are changing new mm -hmm. intellectual properties are available disney has more characters now it's time for new families the kids that went to disneyland originally now have their own kids and those kids are watching all of these new properties so it makes sense for disney to update attractions with all these new characters and the only thing that's unfortunate about this announcement is that it's happening during these protests because I think if they were able to wait, they would have wanted to announce it at a D23 or something big like that. But given the circumstances, it looks like they're announcing it just because of what's happening. And they've talked about how this has been in development for several years. And I mean, maybe a part of them is doing it for that, right? Maybe, yeah, we don't maybe know. it is their way of saying, like, we hear you. We understand what you're saying. By the way, here's what we're doing. We've been yeah. planning this. And uh, I think a couple members of the FGP squad mentioned how it seems like they pushed a handful of people out there as a, no, look, no, this is what we're doing. Don't worry about it. We, we hear you. This is how we're doing it. And so it felt rushed in a couple of different ways, but... It's it's a hard place to be in, right? But I mean, who knows? Maybe at D twenty three, we may get a a way inside look of more details and whatnot. So if D twenty three happens, oh, don't say that. Well, I mean, <laughs> I I know I 
I would love for it to happen, but obviously, yeah, you know, we're living in a different world now. I know. So I'm trying to be realistic about it. But yeah, I mean, like I said, you know, it's time for new families to take their mm -hmm. kids for the next 50 years. And the kids that are kids now are growing up with these other properties that weren't around before. Does it hurt to see one of the most iconic attractions in the park go the way that it currently is? Yeah, of course it does, you know, e especially if there's a name change. You know, Disneyland has been known for its iconic mountains. You know, we have Space, Matterhorn, we have Thunder, and then we have Splash. But, you know, now we're going to lose one of them because of whatever. And who knows, maybe it might be, you know, maybe it might be kept the same. But considering there's no mountains in the bayou and considering it looks like a tree stump, you know, in the yeah. concept art, it, it doesn't look likely that it's going to continue to be called Splash Mountain. You know, one argument that I've seen a lot is, like you said earlier, Tiana deserves her own attraction. She deserves something new from the ground up. And mm -hmm. I ask, where are you going to put that at Disneyland? Yeah. You know, no look thing. what they did for Galaxy's Edge. They had to demolish a portion of the park, all of the offices, mm -hmm. Circle D, you know, yeah. like everything that was back there had to be moved or got demolished because we were expanding the park. Disneyland doesn't have space. If you yeah. were going to put something up, where would it go? You know, when you're trying to bring in a new property like this, you either have to demolish something and start from scratch or you give something in a, a new look. You reimagine it. When we saw the mission breakout, you know, mm -hmm. when that was announced, people were like, how's this going to work? That's I mean, it's an elevator. And I mean, look now. You know, right. We're going to run into the same thing. People are going to be super against it. They're going to ride the new one. They're going to be like, this is the most magical thing we've ever seen. I will be there opening day. That's for sure. As long as we can be in the park. Yes. Safely. <laughs> right. And Karen is home. <laughs> I'll have my mask. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, this whole thing about Splash Mountain changing because it's racist Ah, <sighs> you know, in its essence, I do believe that Song of the South was originally designed to be a a, a family friendly portrayal of things that were happening at that time. However, part of what I think makes people upset about it and in in general in history, part mm -hmm. of what people consider racist is the exclusion of facts about how things went down during that time period and the exclusion of facts of how things are now. That's why we are where we are now, because of the exclusion of those things that are now coming to light. Personally, the fact that Disney has made the decision or that you know Michael Eisner and Bob Iger have put this hard stop on the re-release of Song of the South, I kind of agree with them. You know, yeah. it, it's not... A good look for them to release it. I understand that Zippity Duda is one of those really happy songs that people have connected with, you know, their entire lives. And that, again, in its essence, the film was made as a portrayal of the positivity that could be in certain cases. And that was what the Uncle Remus character was supposed to be, right? His stories were right. supposed to show the positivity in the world and how people can connect you know without that divide however in its context i i can understand why disney has decided to not only not release the film but also reimagine splash mountain since it is based on that and then there's gonna just come a point you know it's just gonna become yesterland stuff and people won't even realize that that attraction was based on anything else and, and in some ways, that's probably what Disney wants, because then people will stop asking, when are you going to release Song of the South? Yep. So. And I could see that happening when the new attraction opens. We're just going to fall in love with something brand new again. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there is, there is concern, obviously, because of what's happening and because of cancel culture, um, mm -hmm. where people are asking, what's next? 
You know, is Jungle Cruise next? Is Peter Pan next? On the call this past weekend, we were asked, is Tiki Room next? There are a lot of stereotypes in those attractions. Jungle Cruise already looks like it was going to be reworked to begin with. When the Jungle Cruise film was announced, we began to speculate that oh, yeah. there was possibly going to be a redesign. And we even talked about The Rock being uh, replacing Trader Sam at one point. And, you know, we've seen it happen. Uh, mm -hmm. We've been fairly lucky that the mansion has been untouched. But at some point, we may even see the mansion be reimagined. You know, we've already seen pirates be changed several times, you know, to comply with the times and to bring in an intellectual property. Um, yeah. The latest is obviously introducing a new character into the Pirates franchise, being Red the Pirate. Mm -hmm. And so are all these other classic attractions next? You know, the Jungle the jungle Cruise, when The Rock started working on it, because it's his production company that's working on this film, um, uh, somebody brought this to my attention that he tweeted, or I'm sorry, not tweeted, he posted a picture on Instagram in April 2017, okay? Uh -huh. And the interesting part of, the, of that quote, like he wrote a couple paragraphs because he was at Walt Disney Imagineering talking to the Imagineers. I think at that point he had gone to the Jungle Cruise and commandeered one of the ships and started doing his own cruise at Disney World. <laughs> um, but the what he says ends with this. Well, clearly, I don't know how the hell men were actually talking in the 50s. But what I do know is being able to star in and produce Jungle Cruise is a dream come true. But what takes this to the next level is that we'll partner with Disney's brilliant Imagineers to help re-engineer and redesign the Jungle Cruise ride in all of the Disney theme parks around the world. I'm sold. See? So I'm so sorry. Is the Jungle so Cruise sorry. next? <laughs> yup. And it looks like it was already planned since 2017. And yep. maybe even longer. Is Tiki Room or Peter Pan next? Eh, maybe. I don't know. Who knows? You know, we never mm -hmm. know what's going to change next. Uh, Disney is on a path to try to be as politically correct as possible. And some people may not like that, but they do need to appeal to the largest subset of people that they can because it's their business. That's what they're trying to do. And you don't want to exclude anybody, you know, if they're going to feel uncomfortable going to something that's supposed to feel magical. Right. You know, so... I, I understand that not everyone is offended by things like that. You know, people's humor levels are at all different places. And some people may hear Jose and think he's the funniest thing in the world. But someone else might hear Jose and be like, what are they doing? Why are they making fun of me? You know, why are they making fun of my accent? Personally, I don't fall into that camp. I see it as just entertainment. I've never seen it Same like here. that. Um I don't know. In general, I think they're going to change them and exclude all that stuff, you know, period. But if they did want to include some of that stuff, what if they, they made them um, like more historically accurate or, you know, change the name so that they weren't, you know, considered to be racist or stereotypical. And then they worked with organizations that, you know, that celebrated those cultures in a way. Like, here's the thing. Like, when I mm -hmm. look at the celebrations that they do for, like, Lunar New Year or the the Plaza de la Familia thing that they do uh -huh. with, with Miguel and Coco and all of that stuff, mm -hmm. like, I don't see – I see that as a celebration of culture. But those yeah. shows were developed in a time where – everyone is a lot more careful about how they portray culture and how they talk about it, right? It, it's not right. something that was developed 50 years ago. So I think that these attractions, if they were left in their essence the same, but reimagined to be more sensitive to cultures and were more historically accurate, I think people would have less of an issue with it. You know, but I don't know. That's just me. Well, you know what I just thought about? Hmm. Moana. I know. And the, we were just 
the whew, many episodes ago we were talking about that in the tiki room. Who knows? Who knows? I mean, she fit better than Iago. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> <laughs> so that that's it. I mean, I know it sounded like a huge rant, but uh, overall, look. We love the fact that this is changing. Um, you know, we, we I know Gavin's not on the episode, but he echoes that as well. Like all three of mm-hmm. us are just in, in love with the new concept art. We talked on the call about how it looks like there's going to be these bioluminescent elements to it. And if they yeah. bring some of that technology that they've put up for Pandora uh, at night, that's going to be one of the most gorgeous spots in the park now. You know, the animatronics. I know everything. Like every uh. look, isn't Splash <laughs> Mountain broken half the damn time anyway? Like, <laughs> what? Yeah. I mean, they'd be <laughs> updating all of that. Tell me, I'm wrong. I always hear people complaining that it's broken down. That's true. Anyway, I can't even remember the last time I wrote it. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. It's been like Ooh. a decade since I, I, I know I actively said I'm gonna go on Splash Mountain. Maybe even longer at this point. But all I can think of is, I know this has come up for a lot of people, and we talked about this as well. So Splash Mountain now being redesigned, does that mean that it's now part of New Orleans Square? Does that mean New Orleans Square gets extended into that area? Does it completely swallow up Critter Country and there's just no more Critter Country? I was talking on the call about how maybe we can just give that back corner to Winnie the Pooh and just call the whole thing Pooh Corner if they're going to leave it yeah. there. And then the Hungry Bear would be repurposed into Tiana's place. Oh. And then you get the <laughs> riverfront yes. for Tiana's place. And then you get the Mark Twain coming by every so often. Come on now. Uh huh. Come on. Uh huh. I'm just saying. Not just that, but at night, if you're eating there, and then you get to see the Mark Twain after Phantasmic yes. and you see the characters. Oh my gosh, yes, please. I-, I would be fine with all the bayou. And the fact that New Orleans Square would just look so beautiful. Oh. Mm-hmm. It's yes. the outdoor <laughs> blue bayou. Let's just call it yes. that. Let's just call it by what it's going to be. Imagineering, I'll send you my address so you can send me my check. I'll let you know where to send it to. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Wishful thinking. I know. <laughs> uh, I know there's been a lot of commentary on this, uh, so we appreciate you hanging in there. Uh, if you want to join the conversation and give us some of your thoughts and how do you, how you feel, um, you know, join the conversation over on Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter. Just search for Podcateers. Uh, we had some people sharing their thoughts uh, over this last week when we originally posted, and we were able to uh, go back and forth with a couple of them about that. Uh, so thank you to everybody that posted. Uh, I'm looking through some of the comments now. Sakura Christina said, yay, a long time coming. Super excited. Uh, Miss Marin V said, Disney never ceases to amaze or disappoint. Times have changed. Lots of people don't like to change. However, this looks like it can be an amazing upgrade. Can't wait to see it. And then Nicole Renee. Um, it, it's got numbers in there, but I'm sure that's how she says it. Uh, Mama Odie's houseboat in the tree at the top of the mountain drop. I am in love. There's like five O's yes. in there. <laughs> love with. As always, I'm a little sad to see a classic go, but it is beyond time. And I am so excited to see another strong female role model like Tiana take front and center in one of Disney's most beloved attractions. On Facebook, FGP Squad member Adriana said... I'm so excited. I subscribe to the fact that Walt Disney himself said that Disneyland will never be done. It will forever be changing. So I feel the nostalgia of Disneyland that was Disney himself would have changed the parks and continue to change it throughout its life. So I say that's fine. I get that people have memories tied to it. I do myself. But if Disney would have changed it, then it should be fine. And I'm super stoked because I really, really love that movie. And she makes a great point. Like she does. Walt would have been the, f- I mean, it's hard to say what Walt would have wanted, right? Like I've, I've made this argument <laughs> right. before that everybody <laughs> always says like, but it's what Walt would have wanted. And I've used that phrase as well, but Walt was known to change things when they weren't working or what he felt yeah. would be better for the park. And this would have definitely been one of the changes that I feel 
he would have wanted in the park or people would have lobbied and convinced him that should happen in the park. You right. know, uh, we had another comment from Jeff on Facebook that says many people have fond memories of the past rides. When I write splash, I still hear my grandmother singing zippity doo to me, but there will be just as many memories tied to the new version. And my long gone grandmother would be the first to be excited about the new thing coming. That's beautiful. Oh, my heart. <laughs> you know, come on. Yeah. So I, like I said, I know that there's a lot of controversy. There's, Just like there was a petition before for them to change Splash Mountain, there's probably a petition out now saying, don't change Splash Mountain. And you can't win. You know, you're not going to win everyone over. There are some people that are just completely against it. And they don't necessarily like what's happening. They feel that their childhood is being erased. And... I mean, in some cases, that's kind of what's happening, right? Because yeah. Disney's trying to be as politically correct as possible. So, yeah, it it is being erased. But like I said, Disney, I think, is doing their best to cater to the next 50 or 60 years of people that come to the park now. Um, so I, uh, aside from everything that's happening, you know, I think that's part of where this transition is leading us into. You know, so now let's just wait. Let's enjoy what Walt Disney Imagineering is going to bring to us. And, you know, let, let's let's try to think of the positives that are, co- that are coming along with this change and this, you know, reimagining of Splash. Yeah, I just, how I'm beautiful. Telling you, I just hope they keep the name in some way. But how? <laughs> how? You know what? If you have ideas for what the new attraction should be called, leave them in the comments for the post for this episode. Like, I would love to hear Yeah, them. I mean, I mean the the I was trying to rename it, and I kind of tongue in cheek said Splash Tree Stump, but I mean, oh, let's be geez. honest, that's a stupid name. So, <laughs> uh, if you have any ideas of what you would call it, leave them in the comment section. We'll read them off in the next episode, and uh, you know we'll have some fun going through all of those. So. All right, that is going to wrap it up for this episode. Again, if you have any comments, please join the conversation. Let us know how you feel about the change and uh, anything else that we talked about in this episode. And go to, go to the website and check out that picture of Grunkle Stan because I'm telling you, it's horrifying, but it's one of the best things you're ever going to see, especially if you're a Gravity Falls fan. I was so psyched to see that. I can't even begin to describe it. <laughs> Just maybe not at night before you sleep. <laughs> Imagine now you put that <laughs> next to somebody who was asleep and then they turn around and they wake up to it. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that would be horrible. It would. It, yeah. Okay. Well, anyway, <laughs> that's going to end this episode. So <laughs> until next time, keep dreaming, keep moving forward, and always remember to pass on the magic. Have a fantastic week, everyone. Bye.